Hey everybody, back with another video. Day in the life of an arcade collector. I was down in the basement rearranging stuff and I got a ton of stuff down. You can't really see it. Let me turn on the light. There we go. Um, I was trying to rearrange things so I could set up my Williams Row because I want to put together a new Williams game and my Bubbles and Robotron and Stargate have all been working fine but Joust goes crazy after I leave it on for a while and Moon Patrol the monitor I need I've probably mentioned this in earlier videos that I've done but I need to swap the monitor from Joust to Moon Patrol the monitor in Joust is originally a Moon Patrol monitor it has Moon Patrol burn on it a very slight and the monitor in Moon Patrol it's actually some kicks game, and I can't remember. I'll have to look it up and watch my video again. But it's you can hear it whining, and um, let me turn off the now light here. Does it have a high pitched squeal, which is annoying as hell? Um, it's not. All the sounds aren't working for some reason. See, I'm jumping. No, no, no noise. That's hard to do. <laughs> so, some of the sounds aren't working. The monitor was messed up. It was like kind of losing sync and stuff. But this monitor that's in Joust works perfectly. So I'm gonna fix that. I don't know. So I'm kind of just screwing around. But the first thing I'm gonna do is this probably this monitor swap. Uh, and it'll probably take me a couple of days, but um, I'm going to share with you some of the the good parts. So that's it. Jack Licks Arcade. Here we go. Day All right, life. first things first, I pulled out the joust, and I was looking at the monitor. What I'm noticing here, if, if you can see it, it looks like the monitor shelf is even not from this joust cabinet. Because, I don't know, can you see that okay? You see how the monitor shelf doesn't go the full width of the cabinet? Now, it, there is, it's squared angled off, so it's easier to get in and out, but you can see there's a gap there. And this joust cabinet is actually 26 inches wide. Or, tw let's see, from inside to inside, it is about 24 and a half almost. Right, and 26 inches wide, and I guarantee you that Moon Patrol is narrower. And I, so I'm going to pull this monitor out. Has it been recapped? No, but it works fine. I'm pretty sure. Oh gosh, do I want to screw with it? No, I think I'm just going to put this in the Moon Patrol real quick. So I'm going to pull this out, and then grab my Moon Patrol monitor. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll, we'll find All out. Alright, I'm not going to film everything, but I will probably fix some of the stuff that was just kind of probably spiced together, like here. I don't know what's going on right there, but I'm going to look at that. The nice thing is about the monitor is you literally just take out a couple of these bolts. And then you can slide out the whole thing. That's what's nice about having it m mounted to a, a shelf like this. Does this have the mirror? Yeah, it does have the mirror that you can see. Can you see that? There we go, yeah. I wish I would have video documented when I picked these up and remember what I did, because this moon, this is the Moon Patrol. Oh, I should measure it here real quick, but I I, I remember this maybe did also didn't come with a monitor shelf. I don't know, for all I know, maybe I screwed up in that monitor that I just pulled does go in here. I don't know. This had some type of weird 100 volt monitor in it or something you know, kind of strange or something. Um, I remember that. And I took it out and put in this Tato or Taito um, monitor. But you, if I don't know if you can see it, but I cut a new monitor shelf here. And I can tell because it's, you know, my cuts aren't that great. <laughs> so, um, but that's interesting. I could use that for my Sinistar, I guess. I don't know. All right, but let me, enough talking. Let me pull this out. I'm going to try to find the serial number on this thing. I, I don't see anything 
on the back side, any stickers on the inside. I had originally, I had done some videos on this and I had replaced, um, I just did a switching power supply, but I also have the original in here as well. Um, yeah, see, I don't see any stickers or anything. 1982. All right, it makes sense why the joust cables are a little messed up. This looks like something I repinned out on this Moon Patrol. And Moon Patrol probably puts out negative sync, whereas Joust puts out positive sync. And that's why they just probably cut off the connector and then, you know, wire tied it and stuff. So, anyway, I'm going to... This will work fine for the Moon Patrol, but for the Joust, I'm going to have to do some work on it. Alright, let's measure this thing. Here's my... Yeah, I totally don't remember what the hell I did. So you yeah, have 23 inches. So this hat is a narrower cabinet, therefore a narrower monitor shelf than the, than the joust. Interesting. All right, if you can see this, I actually had the wrong connector types, excuse me, on there. I, no, actually it was these things. So, and these are like pressure um, connectors, or I can't think of the right term right now, but they're not, the, these aren't the right connectors for those ty types of um, pins. Um, so I repinned it out with some connectors that I have, and I pinned out the sink wrong. I think it should be on pin three, I'm pretty sure. But, and then I messed with the volume pot a little bit. And I think the volume pot is like mostly our problem. Now the only thing is the width is off because this was in Joust and Moon Patrol actually does have a slightly different monitor chassis. Maybe, sorry about that. It might be a little bit different than Joust, I'm not sure, but the width is definitely different. All right, so I pulled the chassis out of the monitor that I just put into the Moon Patrol. So originally it was in the Joust but the tube originally came from a moon patrol. However, however um, you gotta be careful when you're swapping around K4900 chassis. You wanna make sure the yoke um, is compatible with the chassis. There's certain chassis due to the vertical deflection of the yoke that are not compatible. And um, I'll link to a thread on uh, KLOV where I posted some information about this and I actually posted information about this specific chassis. I had done a video where I fixed this chassis. It had a cracked neck board and the neck board is a dash 017 and this chassis is a dash 37. <clears throat> um, which is fine. I believe it will work um, because it has a vertical dampening pot. If it has a vertical dampening pot it works with um, I think dash 258 and dash 264 yokes as long as it has a vertical dampening pot it's a later model chassis it'll work with a 264 or 258 yoke. when you're buying games it's nice to have an all numbers matching game this is not matching numbers this um, the chassis serial number is actually on the monitor frame which sucks because that means <laughs> I have no idea where that chassis came from but it's a 480598 and oh, what oh yeah it says on the tube 480598 and then the Williams cabinet serial number is 589057 and it has moon patrol burn but if i look at gosh i'm forgetting all the numbers this is 591 if you can maybe you can see that 591 424 is the cabinet stamped on the cabinet 591 yeah and that's 589 so anyway this monitor did not go with this moon patrol cabinet and that monitor chassis most likely did not come on this monitor frame and tube because 
um, I'm going to show you in a second because of the width coil that's on there. And um, this is a 264, last three digits of the yoke are 264. So we're in good shape there. Um, this is my joust and it is a 258 yoke, which is also fine. Yeah, the tube says 831-360, 831-360. So we know this monitor frame and tube went together and I'm pretty sure this chassis has never been removed and it came from a legend of Kage. That's what the burn is on it. All right, so that's a lot of information. Anyway, so um, the way you can tell usually the chassis version Jump beyond looking at the bottom, you see that's a dash 37. So that's a little bit earlier. They have like dash 55s and dash 40s and stuff. Um, the width coil right there is broken, so you can't adjust it. There's the core inside there is totally jacked up. Um, it's never been recapped. And if you can see, whoa. if you can see. See if I can zoom in on that thing. There you go. You can see that width coil is a 334, which I think is 0.33. All right, if you can Something see like this. Um, on Moon Patrol and some Taito games, it's a 154 or 0.15 microfarads versus like the Williams games, which is supposed to be a model 4901 is 0.33 microfarads. So I'm pretty sure I'd have to go back and look at my other Williams games to see if they all say 4901, but um, that is probably a 4901 chassis because it has a 33 microfarad cap on it at C365, and it doesn't look like it's ever been desoldered. So I think that chassis was just pulled out, stuck into a Moon Patrol <laughs> um, you know, tube and frame, and then that was stuck into joust, and now I'm sticking it back into a Moon Patrol, but I actually need to convert it to a 4903 chassis by swapping out the, the cap, or just go use that 4903 chassis that I already have that came from a Taito Legend of Kage. Um, there you go. Why I can't so, get anything done, because I'm going down a rat hole. I have a bunch of monitor chassis up here and the other the other thing that the documentation of these Wells Garden RK 4900 says is a 4903 chassis so this is another reason why I believe this is a 4901 out of a Williams game is a 4903 doesn't come with this um, horizontal centering posts right there that's usually deleted and uh, this, one, this looks like another 4901. Sorry about that. Moving the camera around. All right. Let's see here. If I can get my damn. Yeah, that has a, a 0.33 cap as well. If you can see it. Right there, okay. That's the cap, and this also has the horizontal positioning thing. So this one also seems to be like a 4901 chassis. It has a vertical dampening pot, and it is of type 037. And what kind of neck board does it have? A dash 17 neck board. So a dash 17 neck board goes with a 37. It might go with other ones, but I'm not sure. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> moving the camera around like crazy. So interesting. I don't know. I would like to be able to find a 4903 chassis without the centering pot, horizontal centering pot and with a 0.15 microfarad compa um, width capacitor. The good news is this one actually 
does have a width coil that looks like it still has the core in it that you might be able to adjust. So I actually don't really want to use that. Oh boy, I guess I'm going to do a cap kit. All right, I went digging in to my boxes of chassis, and this one I had marked working Taito, and it has the dampening pot. It is a dash 40 with a dash 17 neck board, so that's kind of maybe odd, I'm not sure. What's pin 2 there? Pin 2 is okay, not plugged in. I was just looking at something distracted. Um, but if you look here, maybe you can see it. It is a dash. It's right behind that cap right there. It is a dash. It's a 0.15 uh, microfarad capacitor. And it has the horizontal centering jumper cut. So th I don't know. This could be a 4903. And I could just put this chassis in there and call it a day. Um, I'm still going to have to do something with the chassis that's in the joust. But that's okay. The underside of the Dash 40 is a little bit different. Or I could recap this thing. I don't know. Should I recap it? I already have it out. And it has a looks like it has a good width coil, does it? Um, I don't know. If that width coil does look broken to me. But it probably won't matter. Let me see. Alright, got the chassis back in the cabinet. I recapped the monitor. I haven't tidied up the cables yet. And I have to solder on my little ground strap there. Alright, listen. We're getting some weird noise. But the uh, monitor is working, and it looks pretty decent. Um, however, it doesn't go the full width of the screen. I have about a half of an inch on each side, and unfortunately I can't adjust that because the width coil, they don't make new width coils for the 4900, and, um, and it's, the adjustment screw is broken, so like most of them are. But listen. I think the sound, I think I might have figured out the sound issue. Oh crap. <laughs> now it's working. Just a second ago it wasn't working. But I think it is the pot. And I have the monitor adjusted pretty good. It's kind of like a dark gray with some blue caps. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to see through the viewfinder. But it's pretty decent. And I have the game on continues, but I think it's the pot. I might take this PCB out and just kind of deoxid that pot there. It did go away for just a split second. I got the camera. Oh, see? All right. Oh, now it's working. Oh. See, it was acting a little weird. And I'm adjusting it. Feels feels like there's less feels. Sounds like there's less static. Let's see how it goes. Getting too old for this crap. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. 
that. All right. I guess it's not the pot. The sound. I've recapped this audio board. It could be the amp, maybe. But it's so intermittent, it's hard to tell. these sockets for the Yamahas or I think those are the Yamaha sound chips hmm This level. <laughs> I don't know how I got on this level. Let me mess with it some more. Alright, I'm taking a break from the sound thing back to the uh, chassis. So I took out the chassis and this, I do think this width coil is broken, um, but I did spray some PB blaster in it to see if I could uh, unfreeze it. And I also Grab this chassis, which I don't know where this came from, but this is a 4901, I believe. Um, what is it? It's a dash 37 with a... I showed it earlier. I don't know what it is. But anyway, did a PB blaster in there, and this with coil looks like it's good, which is crazy. There's two options I was going to do. One is I was going to use a 0 0.10 microfarad width cap um, to try to make the image bigger with the existing um, width coil. But since I have a width coil that's actually adjusting um, with my adjusting tool, and it feels like a metric Allen wrench is the right... See, I can actually turn this thing. Now, using PB Blaster, no idea if that's the right thing to do. That thing could heat up, and for all I know, is this flammable? Um, yes, contents are flammable, so maybe I shouldn't have used that. <laughs> um, it could heat up, and you know what I mean? But I'm sure it will dry out, whatever. I, I think it's going to be fine. Um, if not, we'll let it run. Um, so I'm going to take out this width coil from this chassis and put it in here, keeping the original cap, um, just because I do have a width coil that is adjusting. So let me do that. All right, right. Like I said, one thing becomes another. I got the um, width coils removed. This is the good width coil, and this is the one that was in there. And I soaked it. And, you know, I heated it up a little bit. I've done a lot of things to try to break that loose. And the ferrite core just looks like it's melted to the side of the inside of this. It's just plastic. And that ferrite core just seems like it's melted and brittle on the inside and flaking off a little a couple pieces kind of uh, flaked off. But what I would do real quick is um, take my inductance meter here on this width coil and just measure it. And now this width coil, the adjuster is almost all the way at the top. It's 282. Um, 
micro Henry Henry's inductance there as you can see here and if you go to ohms I think it's like no matter what it's gonna be I think the same ohms it's about two ohms yeah two ohms all right and we saw about 285 micro Henry's now this one can adjust it's also two ohms micro Henry's now when um, I've read a little bit on the the forums and stuff to adjust these like if you can't get a good tool in use a um, an Allen wrench but if you can't adjust it inside the cabinet or don't even risk it on these K on these K 4900s if you feel like you need to adjust it go ahead and pull the thing out Oh, sorry, hold on. There we go. And you can adjust it from the bottom a little bit better and get your adjustment tool like all the way up in there as well. So that's about 280 right there. And as you adjust the ferrite core, it adjusts it. And so if you can see, that's about how deep it is in there for 280. Now I think I'm going to have to go way lower. I think I'm going to have to go like. 250. Actually, let me go all the way down to the bottom. Alright, I think that's the bottom. Hopefully, let's see if you can see that inside of there. Yeah, 212 to. This one works, so I'm going to adjust it all the way up to the top. Hopefully I'm not getting it stuck. <laughs> Don't try to... That's probably the problem with these two, is people, like, you know, are too forceful or turn it too much. And that's all the way at the top, 351 micro Henry's. And you can kind of see that it's all the way at the top there, or close. All right, so I am going to go lower. We're going to go about 250 because the other one was around 280, right? And put it in the chassis, and then we'll, we'll know that if I go up towards the top, I'm going increasing the inductance versus lowering it. All right, while I'm looking at ones, this one came out of another chassis that I was just messing with. Um, but I thought the core was completely out of the thing. Like, you can't even see it. And I removed it and looked at the bottom, and there's the core. Right there. And it actually does adjust. Actually, let me um, put this on there so you can see what it reads. Um with the core all the way down like that I mean I guess these things are super adjustable I mean this one I can even go to the yeah 78 micro Henry's and it's all the way at the bottom and if can I turn this thing is it turning yes it is turning with my plastic tool And it looks like there's a little bit of like tape. There's, I mean, this is threaded on the inside. You can feel it if I run the. It's not threaded all the way around, but certain parts are threaded. And it's like there's some, some Teflon tape or something like that. And that might be what it gets stuck on. If it's too close to the top, I don't know if that goes all the way through. It might go all the way through. I'm not sure. But this is adjusting fine. So this this is another coil that's perfectly fine. And I'm just going to adjust it up to the 150 mark. See if I go down through the top. Yeah. There's enough space there. Maybe I'll adjust it up to like 200.
Yeah, so wow. There's another coil that's uh, perfectly fine. So I got one coil that's bad out of the two chassis. I mean, not adjustable anyway. Enough with the science project. Let me put this thing back in there. This is my 4903 with the deleted um, horizontal centering position thing. I'll put that back in. Bad news. Um, I was adjusting this thing and let me see here. I got it stuck. Now this is not the one that I'm putting in the cabinet or I have the Moon Patrol chassis in the cabinet, but we're at 161 uh, micro Henry's on that and it's stuck and it's pretty far down there which might be good for a moon patrol so I guess you just have to kind of hold on to these but I don't know it was adjusting fine and then let me see and then now it looks like it's cracked on the inside maybe Yeah, I think what happens is the ferrite core cracks and then it, something gets stuck in the threads. And now, see, I can't turn it at all. I mean, I'm almost risking busting it. You don't want to break it because at least, even though it's, um, you know, lower micro Henry's, you know, you might be able to use this somewhere else, even though it's not adjusting. But if you get that core out of there completely, who knows what it's going to read. You'd have to like probably stick a core in there and super glue it or something. I don't know. What a pain in the butt, these things. There's no replacements for these. We need a GoFundMe to get these made again. Alright, so this one, somehow I was adjusting it. This is the one that was started all the way at the bottom. I got it all the way up midway and boom, now it's stuck. It kind of sucks. Right, so I have the 4903 chassis that I recapped and put the width coil that adjusts into it. It said at when we measured it, it was at 250 micro Henry's, and it definitely, hopefully, it's still on. Definitely looks better. That's loud, but you can see it's almost the full width at 250. So I'm going to screw it in a little bit more and see if we can, can get a little bit wider. Now there is a slight bow it looks like there. That one's pretty straight, but that might be a little bit bowed, I'm not sure. So, so we're gonna put our tool in, if I can. And I'm gonna turn it clockwise and see if that makes it bigger. A little bit. Let me keep going. It was like maybe a, a couple turns. Hmm. I want to see a big adjustment. So maybe close. I don't see the darn thing adjusting at all, really, is it? Yeah, I guess it is. What am I on? Seven players? I don't know what's going on, what's going on with my PC right now. <laughs> it's like, I want to get it to it's almost completely off the screen. Oh yeah, and now it's off the screen basically in the lower left. I mean it's pretty much full width. The image is not 100% but, or maybe it's because the um, shroud is a little bit off or something, but that's pretty good. So I bet that's closer to like, oh, oh my gosh, what's, what, what is going on with my... My PC is completely jacked up. My PCB, I mean. Like, it's like unlimited lives now. Alright, <laughs> so 
messing with this. Um, usually when you have problems like this, um, it's power related. And I wanted to um, just quickly measure the power at the, let's see if you guys, hopefully you can see this. So um, I wanted to measure the power because usually when you have weird little issues like this, like the sound and the game was flaking out and stuff, um, it's probably power related. So I'm just using my little attachments here. I can. And we have 5.1 volts at the power supply. But if I go and hook onto a capacitor, come down here. Hopefully you can see that. 4.8 volts. So I really want to adjust it. So see, and now my it's slightly at yellow on the power supply, but that's only putting out, I got a voltage drop in the harness. Four point nine. Right, getting volts. there, I'm gonna wrap this one up. But uh, Robotron Stargate Joust, Defender, Make Track still down. Haven't even looked at it. But I got Moon Patrol back in the lineup and I think it's, Monitor's good. I adjusted the power. I think we should be in a stable position here. All right, let's see. Should I play some? Got a little bit of issues going on. Quick game. Oh, I didn't turn on free play like it was before, so I have to coin up. But, but I do like that noise. Anything that has a coin up sound, kind of want to point up real quick. So hopefully my sound is fine after just screwing with the, oh my God. <laughs> what is, what, what just happened? Why am I on a, a harder level? Oh my goodness. I think something is wrong with, oh my God. Maybe I need to reseat the ROMs or something. Look at that. What? <laughs> that, that should be on the beginning level. I'm just gonna wreck to see if it starts at, at that level again. Oh, now I'm not I'm on endless lives. Okay. Okay, beginning course. Yeah, it's up. <laughs> That's not the beginning chorus right there. Well, it seems like it's the beginning chorus, but I saw that one little weird thing going on. attention. That's the defender light, I think, shining, or my arcade other thing. Oh, I broke a record.
One gets me every time. Oh my god. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can't. Alright, that's it. I think I'm done. I think it's working correctly. Let's start at one more game and make sure it starts at the beginning. I think it's a power issue. Like, I need to maybe mess with it a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure it's power related. There we go. Beginner course go. Now I'm done. 